And now it's time for the latest exciting episode of Doz's Television Workshop. Hello and welcome back to Dozzy's Television Workshop. I know I said I was going to have some time off from filming, but um, I had to make this because a bit of a reply to a video posted by Save It For Parts. If you've not seen the Save It For Parts channel, um, it's a gentleman from across the pond that um, builds all sort of weird and wonderful stuff out of scavenged bits. It's a great channel. Um, but anyway, he posted something the other day about a blonder tongue that's the brand, a Blonder Tongue signal analyzer that he bought at an auction. And I thought, I recognize that, but it's not the same thing. Um, here's my um, thing that looks the same that isn't. Uh, let's have a look at it. Right, so what we've got here is a spectrum analyzer. It's for analyzing spectrums. What? Seems all right to me. Uh, if you don't know what uh, a spectrum analyzer is, is, I'm about to tell you, you lucky people. But this is in an identical form factor to the Blonder Tongue um, satellite and TV signal analyzer that was on the Save It For Parts channel. The uh, other day and I thought well that's amazing so here's my spectrum analyzer and the same as the save it for parts guy channel I bought this at auction years ago I didn't pay a lot of money for it I think I paid 180 quid um, and it's been very useful over the years and in fact I did use it in anger the other day and uh, uh, it's got a broken foot. I remember gluing that back on. It had an interesting uh, trip down a ladder. Um, but yeah, here it is. And it's got the same weird and wonderful power supply that the Blonder Tongue had. It's round. Um, it's obviously got a toroidal transformer in it. Um, uh, I'm gonna glue that foot on later, but uh, yeah, there we go. Um, so here it is, and it looks almost identical to the Blonder Tongue um, signal generator. We've got a large, a, uh, a large handle for carrying. It's got that nice sort of sa uh, carry case it comes in. Now, if you're in Europe, maybe in the States, you'll recognise this as being a SCART socket. It is not a SCART socket. Um, it does contain various different signals um, that you can look at, but it is not a SCART socket. You plug that into a telly, you're going to be a world of pain. So, uh, yeah, don't do that. But there it is. Now, unlike the Save It For Parts channels, one where his battery was a bit sad, I'm just going to dim the workshop light. Um, this one's battery does, in fact, work not for very long. So uh, what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to plug in the power supply. Uh, where are we? It goes in down here. And then we can show you what it does. So clearly I have not got the small black and white monitor that um, the Blonder Tongue signal analyzer had. But what I have got is a spectrum analyzer. And um, yeah, it uh, goes up to about a gigahertz, I think. I seem to remember. Oh, that's, we've gone round past zero. Uh, yeah, it goes up to a gigahertz. So uh, it doesn't do the L band and stuff that the Blonder Tongue does, but you can see it's clearly of the same um, same case design. It must be the same people that made it. This is made by R O V E. R instruments, Rover, Spectrum Analyzer for Telecommunications, Radio, TV and CATV, uh, 100 kilohertz, what's that, 0.1 megahertz, yeah, 100 kilohertz to 1000 megahertz, Model TS1. So, um, right, a Spectrum Analyzer, what it does is it analyzes the RF spectrum. So uh, if I connect this 
to uh, the workshop antenna system we should start to see some things occurring on the display. Ah, there we go. Okay, let's give it some level sensitivity. So there we go, we can see there we're getting um, a graph there. Uh, just move up a bit, there we are. Let me put the level back down to calibrate and span to calibrate. There we go. Right, we're now getting some sensible results. Uh, I just want to zoom in a bit. So what you're seeing here, at, uh, it should actually be centered on 510 megahertz. Yeah, there we go, 510 megahertz. You can maybe able to see that bright line. This is flickering quite badly. We've got a sweep rate adjust here, but the faster we sweep, the sort of less accurate, uh, uh, less accurate our uh, output is. But you can see here, we're actually looking at digital television signals. And you think, oh, we've got three. So that's three, what they call digital multiplexes. It's not three. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. And that little one there is actually seven. So there are seven multiplexes in my area. This span here shows the frequency we're starting at. So we've got 508 plus a minus, sorry, plus or minus 50 megahertz. So yeah, that's showing us a 100 megahertz span. Don't know what that is down there. Let's go and have a look. There's no analog TV in the UK anymore. It's a 400 megahertz. Let's zoom in a little bit. Yeah, some sort of data thing, I would imagine. Um, so there we go. If I zoom out again, we go down to 100 or so megahertz to the VHF band. I'd imagine we'd start to see a few bits and pieces there. Maybe not. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's, this aerial's not not designed for that. But if I go all the way down here, and wait till it catches back up. There is. We can resolve some audio from that frequency. This antenna is not designed to work at VHF, so it's why it's a very weak signal there. But yeah. There you go. So it's a useful tool. And in fact, if we go all the way down to uh, DC, by the way, on a spectrum analyzer such as this analog device, will always come up with a zero. You get this hump, which is at the zero point. But if we just move up and back down again, occasionally we can receive AM radio on it right down here. don't think we're going to be so lucky today maybe this is the filter bandwidth by the way oh. there's not much left on AM yeah, and this antenna has got uh, zero zero response down there really but yeah that's what it's doing it's showing us much like an oscilloscope plots voltage over time this is per this is plotting signal strength in decibels against frequency. So useful instrument. And um, I had to use it the other day um, because the local uh, center for adult refreshment currently has no television reception. And, and would I mind taking a look? And uh, oh, there we go. We can actually see the individual multiplexers now because I've um, changed the receiver bandwidth there. So we've got our two there, two there three there so yeah there we go in fact if we go down to 200 megahertz and exactly the same as the blonder tongue there's the fan kicking in if i go down to 200 megahertz these here um let's see if we can zoom in a bit more these little peaks here are in fact digital uh radio broadcasting here in the uk so there are four muxes available there, carrying multiple stations each. Mux meaning multiplex, by the way. But there you go. Just thought that was interesting because, um, you know, Save It For Parts channel had a very, very similar looking unit um, via a different manufacturer. I suspect they all came out of the same factory. Um, yeah, so there we go. Ah, oh, just like is, I've got a production number on it. This one was made 
in March 98. So there we go. Been a useful tool over the years, um, but it doesn't often feature on the channel. I think it did once maybe, but um, yeah, it's a useful thing. Uh, one thing I can show you actually is if I go back up to the TV band, I could actually generate um, some analog TV and we'll see if that shows up on the display. Right, give me a moment. Yeah, so there we go. We can just see coming up here um, 606, no, it won't be on 606, will it? Uh, 783 megahertz there. Um, we've got some analog telly, and I think if I go down all the way there, we may well be able to resolve the audio from it. You can see the video waveform in there. There'll also be mobile phones and all manner of rubbish up there. Maybe that is mobile phone. Okay, let me zoom back out again. Let's go back to that carrier there. That might be my analog TV. In fact, it's looking more like it. Does take a little while to get tuned back in again. That does sound like analog TV. Keep going up. There it is. And there's the sound carrier. Oh. Turn the volume up so you can hear. And that is the analog sound we're hearing from, um, yeah, that, uh, there's, there's the sound carrier. We've zoomed in that far, there's the sound carrier, and there's the vision, vision modulation there. Um, this is not a true representation, by the way, of uh, a TV signal properly, because you can see it's symmetrical. In fact, can you see anything at all without me shielding the camera? Let's zoom in a bit. There we go. You can see that that signal is symmetrical, whereas uh, a proper TV signal would be what they call vestigial sideband, but this is AM, and that's just uh, the way the modulator in my satellite receiver generates it, so I can send the signal around the house. Um, so there you go. That's um, just uh, a little bit interesting, and there's a little bit of a reply to... Uh, save it for parts. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link to it down below. Uh, but just for now, thank you very much for watching. Click like, subscribe, do all that rubbish, and I'll see you really soon here on Dozzy's Television Workshop. Cheers now. Bye.